the Sino-Burmese War, also known as the Qing Invasions of Burma or the Myanmar Campaign of the Qing Dynasty, was a war fought between the Qing Dynasty of China and the Kimbong Dynasty of Burma. China under the Qianlong Emperor launched four invasions of Burma between 1765 and 1769, which were considered as one of his ten great campaigns. Nonetheless, the war, which claimed the lives of over 70,000 Chinese soldiers and four commanders, is sometimes described as the most disastrous frontier war that the Qing dynasty had ever waged, and one that assured Burmese independence. Burma's successful defense laid the foundation for the present-day boundary between the two countries. At first, the emperor envisaged an easy war, and sent in only the Green Standard troops stationed in Yunnan. The Qing invasion came as the majority of Burmese forces were deployed in their latest invasion of Siam. Nonetheless, battle-hardened Burmese troops defeated the first two invasions of 1765-1766 and 1766-1767 at the border. The regional conflict now escalated to a major war that involved military maneuvers nationwide in both countries. The third invasion led by the elite Manchu Bannerman nearly succeeded penetrating deep into central Burma within a few days' march from the capital, Ava. But the bannermen of northern China could not cope with unfamiliar tropical terrains and lethal endemic diseases, and were driven back with heavy losses. After the close call, King Shenbiushan redeployed his armies from Siam to the Chinese front. The fourth and largest invasion got bogged down at the frontier, with the Qing forces completely encircled. A truce was reached between the field commanders of the two sides in December 1769. The Qing kept a heavy military line up in the border areas of Yunnan for about one decade in an attempt to wage another war while imposing a ban on inter-border trade for two decades. The Burmese, too, were preoccupied with the Chinese threat, and kept a series of garrisons along the border. Twenty years later, when Burma and China resumed a diplomatic relationship in 1790, the king unilaterally viewed the act as Burmese submission, and claimed victory. Ultimately the main beneficiaries of this war were the Siamese who reclaimed most of their territories in the next three years after having lost their capital Ayutthaya to the Burmese in 1767. Background The long border between Burma and China had long been vaguely defined. The Ming Dynasty first conquered Yunnan borderlands between 1380 and 1388, and stamped out local resistance by the mid-1440s. The Burmese control of the Shan states came in 1557 when King Bayan Arung of the Tungu dynasty conquered all of the Shan states. The border was never demarcated in the modern sense, with local Shan Sorbwis at the border regions paying tribute to both sides. The situation turned to China's favor in the 1730s when the king decided to impose a tighter control of Yunnan's border regions while the Burmese Authority largely dissipated with the rapid decline of the Tungu dynasty. In 1732, the Yunnan government's demand of higher taxes led to several Shan revolts at the border. Shan resistance leaders united people by saying, The lands and water are our properties. We could plow ourselves and eat our own producers. There is not a need to pay tributes to foreign government. In July 1732, a Shan army, mostly consisted of native mountaineers, laid siege to the Qing garrison at Pu'er for 90 days. The Yunnan government responded with an overwhelming force numbered around 5,000 and lifted the siege. The Qing army pursued further west but could not put down persistent local resistance. Finally, the Qing field commanders changed their tactics by allying with neutral Sorbois, granting Qing titles and powers, including green standard captainships and regional commanderships. To complete the agreements, the third-ranking officer of Yunnan traveled to Simao personally and held a ceremony of allegiance. By the mid-1730s, the Sorbus of the border who used to pay dual tributes, were increasingly siding with the more powerful king. 
By 1735, the year which the Qianlong Emperor ascended the Chinese throne, ten Sorbus had sided with the king. The annexed border states range from Mogarung and Bamo in present-day Kachin State to HSENWI State and Kengtung State in present-day Shan State to Sipsong Pana in present-day Zishuang Banadai Autonomous Prefecture, Yunnan. While the king were consolidating their hold at the border, the Tunggu dynasty was faced with multiple external raids and internal rebellions and could not take any reciprocal action. Throughout the 1730s, the dynasty faced Manipuri raids that reached increasingly deeper parts of Upper Burma. In 1740, the Mon of Lower Burma revolted and founded the restored Hanthawadi Kingdom. By the mid-1740s, the authority of the Burmese king had largely dissipated. In 1752, the Tunggu dynasty was toppled by the forces of restored Hanthawadi which captured Ava. By then, the king control of the former borderlands was unquestioned. In 1752, the emperor issued a manuscript, King Imperial Illustration of Tributaries, saying that all barbarian tribes under his rule must be studied and reported their natures and cultures back to Beijing. Burmese reassertion in 1752, a new dynasty called Kanbong rose to challenge restored Hanthawadi and went on to reunite much of the kingdom by 1758. In 1758-59, King Alongpaya, the founder of the dynasty, sent an expedition to the Father Shan states, which had been annexed by the king over two decades earlier, to re-establish Burmese authority. Three of the ten Father Shan states saw Bwis and the militias reportedly ran away into Yunnan and tried to persuade king officials to invade Burma. The nephew of Keng Tung Sobwa and his followers also fled. The Yunnan government reported the news to the emperor in 1759, and the king court promptly issued an imperial edict ordering reconquest. At first, the Yunnan officials, who believed that barbarians must be conquered using barbarians, tried to resolve the matter by supporting the defected Sobwis, but the strategy did not work. In 1764, a Burmese army, which was on its way to Siam, was increasing its grip of the borderlands, and the Sorbus complained to China. In response, the emperor appointed Lu Zao, a respected scholarly minister from the capital to sort out the matters. At Kunming, Lu assessed that the use of Taishan militias alone was not working, and that he needed to commit regular Green Standard Army troops. First Invasion in early 1765, a 20,000-strong Burmese army stationed at Kengtung, led by Gen. Niemyo Thithap 8, left Kengtung for yet another Burmese invasion of Siam. With the main Burmese army gone, Liu used a few minor trade disputes between local Chinese and Burmese merchants as the excuse to order an invasion of Kengtung in December 1765. The invasion force, which consisted of 3,500 Green Standard troops along with Taishan militias, laid siege to Kengtung but could not match battle-hardened Burmese troops at the Kengtung garrison, led by Gen. Niemyo Sithu. The Burmese lifted the siege and pursued the invaders into Pua Prefecture, and defeated them there. Niemyo Sithu left a reinforced garrison, and returned to Ava in April 1766. Governor Lu, in his embarrassment, first tried to conceal what had happened. When the emperor became suspicious, he ordered Lu's immediate recall and demotion. Instead of complying, Lu committed suicide by slicing his throat with a stationary knife, writing as blood was pouring from his neck. There is no way to pay back the emperor's favor. I deserve death with my crime. While this kind of suicide in the face of bureaucratic failure apparently was not unusual in King China, it reportedly enraged the emperor nonetheless. Sorting out the mean was now a matter of imperial prestige. The emperor now appointed Yang Yingju, an experienced frontier officer with long service in Xinjiang and Guangzhou. Second Invasion Yang arrived in the summer of 1766 to take command. 
Unlike Liu's invasion of Kangtung, located far away from the Burmese heartland, Zhang was determined to strike Upper Burma directly. He reportedly planned to place a king claimant on the Burmese throne. Yang's planned path of invasion was via Barmo and down the Irrawaddy River to Ava. The Burmese knew the route of invasion in advance, and were prepared. Xin Buxian's plan was to lure the Chinese into Burmese territory, and then surround them. The Burmese commander in the field Baliamindin was ordered to give up Barmo, and instead stay at the Burmese stockade at Karangtan, a few miles south of Barmo on the Irrawaddy. The Karangtan fort had been especially equipped with the cannon corps led by the French gunners to reinforce them. Another army led by Mahathi Hathara and posted at the easternmost Burmese garrison at Kenghung, was ordered to march to the Barmo Theatre across the northern Shan states. Trap at Barmo Karangtan as planned, the king troops easily captured Barmo in December 1766 and established a supply base. The Chinese then proceeded to lay siege to the Burmese garrison at Karangtan, but Baliamindan's defences held off repeated Chinese assaults. Meanwhile two Burmese armies, one led by Maha Sithu, and another led by Niemyo Sithu, surrounded the Chinese. Maha Thihathura's army also arrived and took position near Barmo to block the escape route back to Yunnan. The impasse did not favor the Chinese troops who were utterly unprepared to fight in the tropical weather of Upper Burma. Thousands of Chinese soldiers reportedly were struck down by cholera, dysentery and malaria. One King report stated that 800 out of 1,000 soldiers in one garrison had died of disease, and that another hundred were ill. With the Chinese army greatly weakened, the Burmese then launched their offensive. First, Niemyo Sithu easily retook the lightly held Barmo. The main Chinese army was now totally holed up in the Karangtan Barmo corridor, cut off from all supplies. The Burmese then proceeded to attack the main Chinese army from two sides, Balamindan's army out of Karangtan Fortress, and Niemyo Sithu's army from the north. The Chinese retreated eastwards and then northwards where another Burmese army led by Maha Thihathura was waiting. The two other Burmese armies also followed up, and the Chinese army was destroyed entirely. Maha Sithu's army which had been guarding the western flank of the Irrawaddy, then marched north of Myatkina and defeated lightly held other Chinese garrisons at the border. The Burmese armies proceeded to occupy Chinese Shan states within Yunnan. Aftermath victorious Burmese armies returned to Ava with the captured guns, muskets and prisoners in early May. At Kunming, Yang began resorting to lies. He reported that Barmo had been occupied, that its inhabitants had begun wearing Manchu-style pigtails, and that the Burmese commander, Niemyo Sithu, after losing 10,000 men had sued for peace. He recommended that the emperor graciously accept the peace offer to restore the normal trade relations between the two countries. The Qianlong Emperor however realized the falsity of the report and ordered Yang back to Beijing. On his arrival Zhang committed suicide at the order of the Emperor.